Today is Saturday, April 1st, 2023. Welcome to the Survivor Fans Podcast. I'm Joanne. And I'm Stacy. And this is the listener feedback show for Survivor 44, Week 5. Week 5. And no, we do not have any April Fool's hoaxes planned. So, I think one of the super fans does, though. Okay. So, on guard. Be on guard. But nothing yeah. from us. No. You're safe with us. I, I don't do that. <laughs> but don't know why. I just <laughs> don't. <laughs> I've already been suckered in twice with two things I was reading today. Uh, so mm. I wasn't well, even thinking about you, the day, and I read the first one, and I thought, really? What? Is that, did they do that? <laughs> of course not. Oh, all part of the fun. Speaking of fun, we got a listener feedback show, and how many super fans do we have? 16 this, 16. this week. 16. The numbers are a little down. Um, yeah, I'm thinking there were people not happy. Not happy because they didn't get tribal council and we didn't get to see Matthew leave. So it was like a one-two punch mm-hmm. of dissatisfaction on one level. But on another, from what I'm hearing in the feedback, there was some. There's a lot of good stuff happening. So yeah. I'm looking forward. I, I enjoyed it, but I still felt the lack of... Yes, there was like the lack of and the loss of, and that was a little bit of a double whammy, but there's still some juicy details to dig into for this episode. I guess I felt better after watching Matthew's interview that Dalton Ross did, Mm -hmm. and so that gave me that little bit more of information that I guess I wanted. And we will talk about that a little more as we go through here. All righty. Because there's one part. I'm not sure he's telling the truth about, but we'll get to that. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Anything else? Nope. Let's see what Pete has to say. Hey, Joanne and Stacy. This is Pete from Boston calling here. Now, I got to say, even though we got no tribal and no actual vote out, this was still a solid episode, so I'm still going to let out a great big Again, even though nothing fully major happened, and we had what would what, go on paper as a quick, but to me it was something that Matthew had to do. I mean, it was built upon last week, and the guy knows, he said it I mean, in his final speech there, he made a mistake. I don't know what made him want to climb that, other than maybe making good television, I guess, for the camera. Luckily, he didn't even even a head injury when he landed, too, and it was just a dislocated shoulder, but still, that is a very serious injury. I mean, I give the guy credit for fighting it out for, uh, what is, was it now, nine days or 11 days it's, it was, what, until he finally um, had to quit. I give him credit, and I think from a strategy point of view, he offered more. Come the smudge here, so that's a shame. But again, I, I know he'll be all right. He'll get good medical care. I'm sure he's going to need surgery too, and hopefully he's healing well too at home. Sorry, Matthew, that that happened to you. But anyway, guys, overall good episode. Carolyn is Carolyn. I don't know what to think of her. I love I love her character though. She's crazy. She's loopy, but at the same time, she still has. As that idol, even Jam Jam doesn't know about her idol. It's amazing. And I really believe, guys, had Matthew not left the game, I think it could have been Jam Jam, but I think Josh was the one that dodged a huge bullet. Now, we don't know where Jam Jam would have gone, but I think Josh, especially knowing that Josh had a fake idol, I think he would have been a dead duck. You never know at this point. And I, now, watch him ease his way through the merge, especially if he goes back with Dean. Danny. But I don't know that Danny will truly be with them, but based on what happened, he doesn't think so. But 
good, but it should be interesting, guys. Now, Danny and Brandon, from what we saw at, at that disappointing ship wheel island, are they going to come together with their people? Maybe get rid of Jam Jam or Jamie, Target Jamie. Now that Carol open up her mouth there, Danny knows and Brandon about Jamie's idol when, uh, from the previous ship wheel experience there. So I don't know. Uh, I'm worried for Jamie, worried for Jam Jam. So we'll see how this merge goes. I think Danny's in a good spot. We better not get too cocky or Brandon. And we'll, and I don't know what to think of your boy Matt AC either. You know, he's flip-flopping everywhere here and there. But, you know, he's okay. But I don't know how good his strategy is going to be with this merge. We'll see. It should be good, though. I think we'll see. I'm hoping a big blind side next week. Good episode, guys. Take care. Whoa. Whoa. Thanks, Pete. Yeah, my boy Matt still still in the struggleville. He's gonna have no vote for this next tribal council. Assuming yep. assuming he goes to the next tribal council, it could get drawn out even more, I suppose. But on the plus side, he's got Franny the Predator to help him. So she's got that uh, she's got that instinct. She might be taking threats out that are coming from Matt. There's a video out with Franny, and mm-hmm. she calls herself the Predator. She's yes. out fishing. Yes. That's what She's he's providing. referring to for those of you who have not seen the Franny video. Yep, that's a good one. There's a, a good one on Danny, and then there's a little bit with the Tika tribe and Josh. There's kind of three extras that they provided this week. Worth watching for sure. Yeah, Matthew's injuries were extensive more so than we imagined but ed's gonna get into that i think he's coming up here shortly so i think he's got some details on it for us thanks pete next up we got a call from robert and survivor fans this is robert from canada calling in with my listener feedback did you guys hear the big news that jeff announced that next season of survivor is actually going to be like a back to basic season they're gonna get rid of shipwreck island get rid of shot in the dark and all these other weird advantages and they're just gonna go back to basic with just a few (laughs) hidden immunity idols i'm really looking forward to it but anyway happy april fools friends now as far as my thoughts on the episode i guess if i were to pick one word to describe this episode it might actually be turd yeah this episode didn't really do it for me i mean it started off great we got lots of time at camp and time spent with the tribes and I thought the immunity challenge was okay, but the problems for me started soon after that with the whole visit to Shipwreck Island or journey to the Shipwreck Island, whatever we want to call it. I've never been a fan of this gimmick to begin with, and this time it just felt so inconsequential, like it just felt kind of pointless. And I understand what they're trying to do by adding a bit of mystery of people not knowing exactly what's going to happen when they go there. You might, you know, risk your vote, get into get an advantage or you might just go for an all-you-can-eat buffet or maybe you'll just go and sit in the sand but i don't know just for me i don't find it particularly interesting and in this episode i actually picked the right tribe to go to tribal council and i had josh as my vote off but i saw as soon as matthew had that conversation with jeff and the doctor i knew that he was going to end up leaving this episode there wouldn't be a tribal council which is i guess what kind of really soured it for me and maybe i'm particularly jaded because i had josh as my vote off and i thought i was going to get it but just didn't yeah. seem right that the tribe that lost didn't have to go to tribal council but what can you do this is survivor right i think my highlight mm-hmm. of the episode for me actually was the whole matt and franny thing it was kind of interesting i think it was our first insight into the fact that their relationship is uh, reciprocal like they really do seem like kindred spirits so i think it's going to be really interesting seeing that play out especially post merge but as far as who's trouble who's in trouble next week I think some of the big guys are in trouble, like Brandon or Kane and Josh, definitely. And I think Jamie might be in trouble, too. So I might pick one of those as my vote off, but I look forward to hearing what all the other fans have to say. And that's it for me. You guys just take care. Thanks, Robert. Yeah, I don't think you were alone. There were a lot of people who chose Josh to go last Mm -hmm. week. That was the majority, wasn't it? Yeah, and uh, then they dangled tribal in front of everyone and then snatched it away. (laughs) Indeed. I think I think Robert's onto something. Jamie and Carson because they got those idols and people don't know about the the time on them. They could easily become big targets. But Carolyn knows. She, she read Josh's 
That's true, but since Danny and Brandon were broing out, it didn't seem like she shared that detail. I don't that think they she expired. shared it with them, but she knows. Yeah, assuming she remembers. And she'll, if she needs that information, she can choose to share it at any time. That would probably be. What would you do? I think I'd probably keep that to myself, especially if they chose to target them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. As long as it's not me. Not me. me. Yes. But. If she needed it to, you know, maneuver something, then at least she's got that knowledge. If she needed it's one of their It's always good to yeah. have the knowledge, whether you use it or not. Absolutely. Thanks, Robert. Next up, we got a call from Tim. Hail and well met, Survivor fans. DM Tim here with my thoughts on what we saw this week. In D&D, to make sure your hero isn't too powerful, you give them a flaw. Josh's flaw is that he lies about as poorly as the third grade student who told me this week that they have two pet baby pandas at home. Sure, kid. Sure. Good luck with that. (laughs) Why is he even trying? Jumping over to Carson, and I think I finally figured out he might be a sorcerer. They use their charisma to manipulate people and often can do things with magic that are illegal otherwise. Jafar is a sorcerer if that helps. Carson is clearly very charismatic, but a healer he is not. Sorry, Matthew. He's also used a charm person spell, which has attracted Kane, the lovable bard as well. I was wrong about Danny. He's not a rogue. He's a martial artist or a monk. I had claimed he was a rogue because he was so good at hiding, and he had that fun little role he does everywhere. But monks can also manipulate energy to do the same things. He even channels some of the energy into visiting his family in another time and place. I was right, however, about Matthew. When making a pact with otherworldly entities, don't upset them by doing stupid things. They will basically discard you and try again with someone else. I bet he'll play again, but probably a very different game. The challenges were fun to watch. Tika got some great roles in the first section of the obstacle course. Brandon once again was very impressive with his dexterity. Jeff said he didn't lose a drop. The maze looked fun, but I almost think Danny would have done better without Matt. But you see, he was still able to freeze time just to avoid falling off the edge there and get second place. Danny, Caroline, and Brandon get to go on a little side adventure to the Feywild. The Feywild is sort of a bizarro fairy world. Lots of tricks and other sort of things happen to you there, like Carolyn being invisible. I love that this trio out here has some really intense tattoos. Brandon the Bard even uses his to tell stories and do impressions. The scene with Josh and Jam Jam talking about their experiences was really sweet. Maybe it's just because my drag queen partner and I watch a lot of Drag Race, but I kept expecting RuPaul to show up and ask them to make puppets of Sandra and Rob. Man, I'd love to see a hybrid (laughs) Survivor Drag Race someday. Maybe that's the TTRPG everyone's waiting for. I'm also hoping to see the D&D movie that comes out this week. Although, I still haven't seen the latest Star Wars movie. I wonder what Kane would have to say about that. What about the Jedi? What about the Jedi? (laughs) <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Tim. I'm totally enjoying your D&D lens on this season. Next up, we got an email from Ed in Milwaukee. Going into this week's show, I felt that Danny was arguably playing better than anyone, but he seriously stumbled this week. His courtship of Brandon and his treatment of Carolyn showed that he had he was acting like the broish jerk that he said in pregame interviews that he did not want to be. The producers showed their cards fairly early in this episode that there would be a medical evacuation, that there would be no tribal council when medical examined Matthew right after the challenge, but did not show us the result. During the Shipwheel Island segment, I was focusing more on Matthew's status than on the Shipwheel party, and when they returned to the Tika tribe camp, I knew that there would not be a tribal council. I also was aided by the fact that looking at the clock, there was not enough time in the episode to hold a tribal. Perhaps it would have been more suspenseful if they had not shown us the medical segment after the challenge and then have Jeff show up at the Tika camp just prior Mm. to tribal with the news that Matthew was gone. I totally enjoyed watching Matthew play Survivor, but I thought that it was good that he left the game. He said in post-game interviews that in addition to a separated shoulder, he had a rotator cuff... What is that called? Torn rotator cuff? Mm, yeah. A fractured humerus, and it chipped. I guess there was a bone floating in there. Yeah. And, and a fractured scapula and a torn labum, and that a muscle had to be reattached. Yeah. It's just staggering. Was a, that, the mess. Yeah, that, yeah. that was, I don't know how he even managed for nine days. That's horrible. Back to Ed for more details. He has had surgery and appears to be recovering well, 
but Matthew is a barber, and having a healthy shoulder is essential for him to be able to do his job. Yeah, he said he, he was already back to lifting body weight, I think. So mm. he's he's doing good, but with a lot of physical therapy. Yeah, so. yeah, a lot. It continues, I do not know if Survivor covers his medical expenses, but given the income that Survivor generates, they should. Jeff Probst could easily afford to have Matthew's medical expenses taken out of his paycheck. I also have the radical belief that when someone suffers a serious injury that they are allowed to temporarily leave the game to go to a hospital or medical center to get a full medical evaluation with x-rays, etc., from which an accurate diagnosis can be made as to determine if the player is capable of returning to the game. Players such as Stephanie LaGrosa and Tyson have played with separated shoulders, but I have no recollection of someone playing with all the ailments that Matthew had. The best thing about Matthew's evacuation and the subsequent cancellation of Tribal Council is that it spared us from having to watch A Tribe of Two. I was fearing flashbacks of Stephanie and Bobby John and Palau. The only thing worse than a tribe of two is a tribe of one. All right. Thanks, Ed. Good job. Next up, we got a call from Jesse. Hi, Joanne and Stacey. It's Jesse calling in again. I really love this episode, even though nothing really happened in terms of the game moving forward, but it was just really entertaining. I loved the journey that they went on because we just got to see players interact and that's like the best part of the show. I was a little confused why Brandon was on the tribe that chose everyone for the journey and so why didn't he choose Josh for the journey if he wanted to team up with Danny and Josh? Like why not choose Josh for the journey? So I wondered why he actually chose Carolyn in the first place. And then it was just super funny watching Danny and Brandon. It's just, I mean, it's bad gameplay and it was just so bad socially that they were just speaking directly to each other and totally leaving Carolyn out of it and just basically saying to her face that she, she's not good in challenges and she's not a threat or anything. And I mean, I hope that she gets back at them. <laughs> you know, it really made me root for Carolyn even more. And then I was super curious to hear what everyone said about their journey. I mean, we got to hear Carolyn reporting back, but we didn't get to hear how Brandon and Danny told their tribes about the journey because it was just like such a unique journey and I was curious if everyone would believe them that that's what happened on the journey or if people would think that they had an advantage and they were trying to lie. And I also thought it was interesting that Jam Jam and Josh didn't, they weren't too suspicious that Carolyn had an advantage and like Josh was still trying to get Carolyn out even though she had gone on this journey which makes her kind of more likely to get an advantage. Jam Jam's trajectory was just in general super entertaining this episode. He starts off the episode super sad, he feels like he has no power, he doesn't know what he's going to do and over the episode he somehow gets in this position where both Josh and Carolyn want to work with him. He's just like laughing openly about Josh's tree male idol and he kind of was in a powerful position, so that was great to watch. I was super excited for that tribal council, actually, because a three-person tribal council is just so exciting. I mean, really, that is when truly anyone can go home. Everyone is vulnerable, and everyone is the swing vote. You know, it's, it's just super exciting, so I was disappointed that we didn't get that, but I'm happy that everyone is safe for the next week, and I'm super excited. I think the merge is where the game truly begins, so I'm really excited for next week. And yeah, thanks to all that you guys do, and I'm excited to hear what everyone else thinks. Thanks, Jesse. There was an extra video with Danny yeah. when he comes back from the, the buffet, basically, and he's insists that they search him and his bag right to confirm that he came back with nothing and then he just tells them about what he got to eat yeah he said you know no no check it i wouldn't believe it so you know i need you to know that i didn't get anything so that you're not suspicious so check everything and for the location of the videos i usually just catch those i'm subscribed to survivor on cbs on youtube so i see them pop up in the feed there there's usually a couple per week there and then there'll be an extra video over on ew.com well and jesse also mentioned why they wouldn't uh send josh choose josh mm -hmm. and i thought maybe they didn't want to put a target on him that if he got to go again he'd have even more of a reason for that tribe to vote him out 
and or might have an option to get something that would save him another time. Yeah, well, could be, but obviously Those are the they didn't. I don't think there was an idea of the Meat Shield Alliance until Danny proposed it. He kind of kicked that discussion off, as I recall. So maybe Ra too, and in particular Brandon, weren't even thinking about that possibility. It was just something that materialized once Danny and Brandon were there. Well, and we don't really know yet if any of that was even real. <laughs> or they just, you know, that's oh, what you mean they if it chose was just talk? to. Yeah, if it was just talk or not. I agree with everyone, though. The payback has got to come for them it, just overlooking and discounting Carolyn like that. I'm mm. not a fan of Carolyn in the context of the game at all, but I that imbalance nobody deserves to be treated like that yes that imbalance needs to be that rectified. that was um that was a, <laughs> in my opinion that was a big mistake in their gameplay we'll see we'll see if those it may not come. have consequences but i still think it's a mistake to do that you never know when it could come back and bite you yeah i i think about their perspective on her they've seen her in the challenges where she's she basically is yelling and failing. That's this cycle that they see. So there's just kind of like the incompetence or the or in the very first one where she took time to take her pants off like that was somehow going to help her throw the ring higher. In, in the middle of a challenge, she, she just stops to change her attire. Well, and, they said that she said she thought um, it was she couldn't get down far enough. She couldn't squat down far enough to really push it up, and that's why she took them off. Didn't make a bit of difference. It had other. Well, she thought whether, it might. Whether other She's going to try it. Physical challenges or whatever it is that's holding her back. <laughs> From that perspective, so you you on one hand you can kind of understand why they would overlook her. And then in the other, but to do it in but the way they did. But not insult her to her face. Right. That you're, you're no threat. And then, yeah, you can come with us because you're no threat. And then just to speak over past her in the course of the conversation. I would be determined to show them what a threat I could be. The social. There's more than just a physical threat. The lack of social skills there is definitely, yeah. feels like it's going to come back to Blaring. get them. Blaring. Yeah. Good deal. Thanks, Jesse. Next up, we got a call from Shaheen. Hi, John and Stacey. Hope you and all the Survivor fans are well. We're recording this around 1.30 in the morning here. I've been forced to do that because, unfortunately, I've had had a lot of time since I've come back from my home city. But now I can start recording again, which is great. Felt like a pretty redundant week in the world of Survivor. It didn't all go to waste. Left a bit of a sour note. I think we lost a little bit of time. But I think we are starting to hone in on what that winner's edit could look like. Going by, you know, what we saw in seasons 41 to 43. And I think we can rule Carolyn out now. I think she'll make the top five. But I just have a feeling the winner's going to be someone that fights a lot more adversity than her. I think she's had it a bit plain sailing. I think going by 41 to 43, you need a bit more of a social story it's not just a strategy i've been fixed in just by being a fan of survival so long that it's just purely strategy but i think 41 to 43 has shown us this game is a much more social game and these contracts that they build between each other maybe they've been funneled into thinking this but maybe seasons 41 to 43 have made it a lot more social than strategic so i think that rules carolyn out but we'll see uh, just to go by her relationship, so I'm, I just, I'm not sure. But I do think it could be someone like Josh. I think Josh has uh, had a late edit begun on him. They've briefly highlighted his precarious positions in both Soka, that was late, and again in the current tribe of Tika. Well, I wouldn't wish my greatest ap- enemies to be put upon. Horrible, horrible thing to happen. Um, but what's more, he's been seems been saved by Jeff and the miracle send off of Matthew. You know, seemingly saving him from being voted out. Just putting it out there. But he's my early pick at this purgatory merge situation mm. that we'll have soon. Small notes, kind of getting sick of Carolyn. I know production loves her, but I'm starting to find her mannerisms a touch too annoying and disruptive to tribe time and strategy talk when we're trying to understand what's going on in the game. I can't imagine that her tri- tribe mates are finding it any easy either yes she's strategic we understand that but we saw in this episode that she can be a bit annoying and starting to grow my gears <laughs> uh tika going from three to two was super obvious we called it last week it was an inevitability when you have an exhausted team of three going to war against the rest the other two tribes are just so stacked they can rest as many people as they want 
the endurance is just not there and it just goes back to what we've talked about plenty of times so a couple of really cringeworthy moments unfortunately we sort of broke down the beer touching the fake idol just no please don't do that i have a big beard i'm not letting anyone touch it except my you know family <laughs> and fiance and last of all I think Jeff really enjoy, enjoys the medivac uh, to show how like tough and real Survivor is. Jeff, you're just way into it, dude. Just I know you built it up, but the the monster and all of this is just getting way too much for me. All right, thanks for all that you do. Thanks, Shaheen. Strategy and social are not orthogonal. S- social's absolutely a strategic way to tackle the game, and your social skills, your social acumen, certainly play into the strategy there. I'm intrigued by the idea of Josh as a dark horse winner at this point that mm. he's coming through. That's that's a hard one to factor right now. I'm not seeing it, but my eyes are open to it, given what you were saying. Good deal. Thanks, Shaheen. Next up, we got a call from Drew. Hey, Joanna Stacy. Hey, everyone. This is Drew. So, kind of kind of bummed this week. I mean, not only was Matthew my USB, but I just feel like he had so much in him. I mean, this is not going to be a unique feedback for this episode, for the season in general, probably. I think that Matthew was well-liked by a lot of fans. I think he represents a lot of fans because he was he's a super fan, but also he did a lot of preparation to get there. Of course, it's also not going to be a unique feedback that he did it to himself. So that kind of frustrates me too. Like it was just a stupid mistake, kind of carelessness, reckless. I don't know. I just wish that I kind of had the feeling that it would it would kind of work itself out. Like a lot of times these injuries do. But I guess he must have done a lot worse damage to it than we suppose. But I don't know. If I kind of like saw a couple seasons in the future and he was back after surgery or who knows what. Maybe it'll never never be the same. But I'd be I'd be on board with a second chance for him i'd be happy to see him again uh yeah just kind of bummed also because i just i was really looking forward to that tribal council too i was carolyn i just really wanted to see that go down i thought that the call out of josh of his fake idol was hilarious i think the gem jam is kind of annoying and so i was just like what's gonna happen let's just get something going here i think the danny and brandon thing was insane even if you think that she's kind of worthless why as a player to say why even would they just completely ignore it just seemed like really really bad social game especially since it sounded like they were thinking that she would be valuable to keep around as a number because obviously she's not a threat so she's not going to be put it out but then they just treated her i don't know like part of the scenery like she wasn't even there it was really really awkward and her reactions were kind of priceless tv but yeah I, the challenge was fine it's just these continual series of relays that always come down to the the puzzle or the maze anyway so it's why not just start with the maze since they're all kind of end up with i guess the point is to get there first to have a better advantage i don't know i just like remember when the challenges used to be harrowing i i've harped on this before so i don't need to go into it but kind of bummed but i guess they gotta think of a new usb but i i just really liked matthew and how, how things were looking for him but gotta do what you gotta do i was not surprised to see jeff come out but i'd kind of forgotten about it so i really was expecting a tribal council just because the edit i guess tricked me i thought oh that's a problem but then they didn't mention it again until that moment so also you jeff jeff like just the worst okay his face when he was watching the doctor talked to Matthew. I swear it was, it was like this demonic that there was this medical emergency <laughs> having this severe pain because it was such wonderful talk show content. I, and anyway, don't get me started. Jeff, stop it. You're gross. Okay, everyone have a good weekend. I'm actually submitting this before Friday night. It's Friday night. I'm, I'm not even on Saturday morning, so it's doing great. Talk to you later. Bye. Excellent. Yes, got that feedback in early. Thank you very much. Great to hear from you. Good job. Next up, we got an email from Jack in California. This was one crazy yet unforgettable episode, so let's get into it. Carson is playing a really good game right now, and I hope he can continue his great run. I am kind of surprised that everyone is open to him and that he is gaining a lot of information from his new tribe mates that he's still getting to know. It's sad to see Matthew lead the game like he did, because he was playing really hard, and I can see he really wanted to stay. But his injury got the better of him, and it stinks that he had to get out that way. However, I think he probably made the right choice of leaving the game instead of staying out there and potentially aggravating it more. I guess it just goes to show that this game is indeed hard, and it takes a lot out of you. 
One stupid mistake can make you leave this game. I feel like we may see him come back in a future season. I hope so. It was pretty clear to both Jam Jam and Carolyn that Josh's new community immunity. Id- immunity, <laughs> immunity idol was indeed fake. I guess you know what things look like around the camp. You can easily put it together, whether it was fake or not. It also would probably help if you know what a real one looks like in the event that you are shown and can distinguish between real or not, which I know is easier said than done. As for the challenge and journey this time around, I think all tribes had a really great strategy as to how to hold the buckets. They made really quick work on dropping the gates down with only two trips. Yeah, that's true. The journey this time was very difficult in that there was no choices to make, no idols or advantages found, but just a refresher at the sanctuary and how it was time to really get to know the other two contestants. It was unfortunate to see Carolyn not at all being on the outs during most of the talks about moving forward, but I can also see how she can use that to her advantage and try to get rid of the strong players like Danny and Brandon, who clearly want to work together when the merge comes. I feel like it, if it wasn't for Matthew's exit, Josh probably would have gone home. Bring on the merge if that's what happens next week. I do believe it, we will be getting quite, quite some idols played during the next tribal, but we shall see. All right. Thanks, Jack. Some of those idols will go away, though. Matthews is gone, of course, since yep. he is. And, and he did tell us that he did not give it to anyone. He never even got to say goodbye to his tribe. Right. So there was no opportunity. But what really surprised me was that he said he would have given it to Cain. If he could have given it to anyone in secret, he would have given it to Cain because that's mm-hmm. who he was closest with. As a matter of fact, they were running a coordinated attack on Carson when he got there for Matthew to focus on strategy and Kane to focus on the like game strategy and for Kane to focus on just being his friend, bringing him in. Yeah. We had no clue. They were that that Kane was his number one. Yes. I was like, Ooh, had no clue. Been hidden from us for sure. Mm -hmm. And then, cause we thought Kane was kind of off on his own. And, and he said he was when he was talking to Carson, but mm-hmm. now it, it looks like it's part of this bigger yeah, play. Yeah, it was a bigger setup. That Matthew and Kane were working. Because, and he said that Lauren and Brandon were... Got really close got after close. that first tribal. And that Matthew so. realized that he wasn't... He didn't have a shot at being Brandon's number one ally. So there's some great intel for everyone. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I just was surprised because you don't get to see all that extra. And I was like, oh, wow. Okay. Puts a different spin on things for sure. Now, he also said that had he uh, been forced to give the idol to someone in public, he would have given it to either Carson or Lauren. Put a target on. Put a target on. So, Yes. Things so thought, aren't always yeah. what they seem, okay. for sure. <laughs> Definitely some heady you know. edit manipulation going on there. Thanks, Jack. Next up, we got a call from David. Hey, Joanne and Stacy, It's David in Pittsburgh. Well, after watching the current season of Australian Survivor, which seems to have about a hundred contestants and a thousand episodes, American Survivor is just speeding along, and I'm having fun with that as well. I want to give props to the editors for how well they're playing us this season, starting with the previews last week, which showed Matthew complaining about how much pain he was in. And I thought right away, that's a red herring. He's not going to go. So, of course, I didn't pick him to be out this episode. And when it came to Tiny Tika and they're trying to decide who's going to go, and all of a sudden we see this montage of Josh and all the struggles he's gone through to make it to where he is now, I thought, well, there it is. Josh is on his way out. But no, they tricked us again. 
it was a fun episode that gave us a lot of clues about a lot of the players and how their strategies working or not working. So I'm just going to make a few comments. Carson thinks he's the mastermind and nobody's going to know it, but I can guarantee you his humble brag efforts are not going to go unnoticed. Matt's comment, my blind spot is Franny. The only way this guy's going to start strategizing is going to be if Franny gets voted off and then he's going to really have to play. I don't know if he's going to do that or not. When Jeff says, once again, immunity is back up for grabs, there's Kane mouthing the words. Danny to Brandon, me and you and baby Josh, that's money in the bank. And there's Carolyn saying, I'm glad you two worked it out with Brandon's <laughs> response. You're somebody to keep around because you haven't proven yourself in the challenges. And then I'm just being honest, watch out for a woman scorned. The only thing I'm not sure about is how many women contestants have been in the background this season. Right now we've got Lauren and Heidi, and I'm just sort of waiting for something to happen or them to do something. They just, I don't know, it, just like we have had so many women be booted off, and most of them, I can't even remember much about them. But I guess the bigger players, big outstanding contestants are taking all the oxygen out of the room. And one of them is Jam Jam. I love the scene where he's laughing over Josh's fake idol. Even though he might be ready, he <laughs> might be going home, Jam Jam's making jokes. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I love him. He's my USB. Is he going to make it? I don't think so. really want to hear what the rest of you guys have to say. And I'll talk to you next week. Bye. Awesome. Thanks, David. Next up, we got a call from Parker. Hey, it's Parker from Indiana, and I actually really, really loved this episode, which I'm super happy to say after my disappointment of last week. That said, I'm really sad Matthew left. He has been such a big part of the season. I loved Matthew. He, he was playing really hard, playing overplaying a bit, yeah, but he was fun. Yeah, dude, go out there and do it. Play a super hard game, because I'd like to think I'd do the same. Maybe maybe not as over overly, I don't know. I feel like he really did overplay a lot, but I feel like I'd do the same. No matter how long or short you stay in the game, have fun. Go crazy. Play big. Don't climb on stuff, but play big. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's really unfortunate to lose him, but I think it's probably the best thing for him. I am interested. We know Bruce got an invite to come back. Does Matthew also get an invite? Maybe not an official one like Jeff gave Bruce, but maybe, maybe they've been planning this since the season ended. Maybe they're going to return for like a captain season. And I'd love for it just to be those two and not to have a third one. So we could go back to two tribes, maybe have that be the excuse that they need to go back to two tribes. Because I think we've seen three tribes. It, it's, got, it's getting old. If you stick with the same tribe breakdown for too long it just gets old so yeah i think that could be an interesting thing maybe probably just speculation but <laughs> maybe there's something behind that who knows i know jeff loved matthew as well so I mean, he loves both of them so maybe maybe who knows but no no super fun episode i loved i love the tribe time again i love it so much yes please and the journey wasn't bad that was actually super fun maybe my favorite part of the episode terrible gameplays like terrible social game from brandon and danny <laughs> to just bro down and like leave carolyn out of it but hilarious i was here for every second of it i was like yes this is this is amazing how can you not love this and and you just have carolyn's that are just seething and honestly carolyn's growing on me a little bit she's made me chuckle a couple times i don't find her as annoying uh, and she's also in the best spot, kind of, in the game. A little bit, like, what, what am I saying? No, I hate Carolyn. Ah, no, that Tika tribe is so fun. <laughs> they're, they're, they're such a train wreck, but they're so fun. I'm really glad that all of them stayed, even though I definitely would have gotten a vote off point because I had Josh going. Last week was not fooling me. I knew that Jam Jam and Carolyn would get back together. I knew it. Their story has been lockstep, and then last week, randomly, Oh, JK, they're not. So, like, I knew they would get back together, which they did. Next week, we got Mergatory. So, yay. My favorite part of the season. <laughs> Just kidding. It's not. But I'm glad we got a really fun episode before the awfulness that is Mergatory. Uh, that's all I got. I will see you all next time. Excellent. Thanks, Parker. Next up, we got a call from Cameron. Hey, Joanna, Stacy, and Survivor fans. This is Cameron from North Carolina. 
What about the Jedi? I thought that was a really good point. With no further context, of course, just that quote right there really stuck with me. I'm playing, but Kane and Carson working together, I think that could definitely be a unit going forward. He said something about nerds tend to stick with nerds. And I guess in the past, Davey worked with Christian some on David vs. Goliath. But honestly, when he first said that, I couldn't really think of too many examples. It definitely seems like Mm -mm. the nerds, the token nerd players, they're on their own for the most part. And yeah, it's easier to acclimatize to other nerds. But I just don't feel like that's much of a trope that I've seen that often before. But I think both of them are pretty smart. I give Carson a little bit more credit than Kane out the gate of who I think is better off going to win the game. But I think it's a pretty good duo if they can stick it out through the merge. Soka is very synchronous. They are very kumbaya with that all meditation and the yoga. I think from that tribe, there's no one who's really sticking out as a potential winner to me, though, aside from Jamie. Danny has been getting a lot of screen time. But Danny, to me, is just, he's really enjoyable for one season. Sort of like Jay on Millennials Gen X. A one-hit wonder type of player that you're probably never going to see again, unfortunately. But very fun to enjoy him while we have him. So I'm enjoying me some Danny, I won't lie. Over on Tika, man, the kids could not play nights. Jam Jam and Carolyn are so clearly there to play play very hard i've never seen someone get called out for a fake idol in that fashion before like jam jam and carolyn were both let me see it let me see it and then the beads from tree mail when (laughs) jam jam immediately pointed that out i'm man fake idols these days are like i was saying last week it's definitely gonna change going forward because you don't even know if what you're picking up is legit or not whether it has paper with it or not the fake idols like i mentioned last week the bob crowley type idols Those aren't going to work anymore. Jam Jam called it out right away, and I thought Josh played it off in a very silly manner. He probably would have been better off just fessing up right there, right then, been like, all right, you caught me. I was stupid, but I got to do what I got to do. I put Josh's safe in JSFL this week because I just love dancing with danger, living on the edge this season, baby. And it actually kind of paid off as the episode started winding down. I was like, what is wrong with me? Like, I before I realized (laughs) that the tribal was actually going to get canceled, I really was thinking Josh was going at that point. And I got saved by Matthew's foolishness, I suppose. But I was talking with my mom after the episode. I hope Matthew gets a chance to play again. I feel that way about every meta but compared to some other medevac do you feel a little less sympathy on this front because he was clowning around on a huge wet rock formation some people like bruce at the beginning of the season some freak accident type of stuff happens and they have to go so matthew was a little different but i'm still sad to see a medevac nonetheless joanna stacy survivor fans i will see you all next week thanks cameron matthew said he's already preparing his, himself mm-hmm. for uh, getting the call and that he's willing to sign a contract or anything to say that he will climb on nothing. Right. <laughs> One of the other interviews, he mentioned that the reason he was doing that was that he swore he saw something that looked unnatural up there. And when you see something that looks out of place in Survivor, you go for it. But he said that's that's really what led him to that. Well, that at least makes me feel better about it. Yeah, that he wasn't just goofing thought, around. Where do you even think you're going? Yes, just I'll get high. <laughs> Watch course, me climb. Maybe that's an afterthought. You never know. Yeah, could be. <laughs> Thanks again, Cameron. Next up, we got an email from Josh the Plush Moose from Massachusetts. Dear Joanne and Stacy, this episode made me angry. It's clear that medical's just a triage team, removing only the worst cases while offering Band-Aids, homemade slings, and other Gilligan's Island-level medical aid to the rest. Matthew played for nine days with undiagnosed broken bones. With all the money spent on production, you'd think they'd have a portable x-ray machine. Maybe Sia will buy them one. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) had a similar thought when I found that out, that he he didn't get x-rayed until he got back. That, That just really surprised me. Yeah, not even at Ponderosa. My other observations. Matt hit rock bottom and had to drop out of the game. I see what you did there. I'm going to be a party pooper and not use the T word in a joke. Thank goodness. (laughs) It's right there. It's an easy shot. It's a layup. Too easy. It was a travesty that medical let Matthew play in pain until he dropped out. Which is worse? 
Muscle bros or nerd bros? Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Carson is a hugger, or was he trying to reset Matthew's shoulder? <laughs> Danny misses his baby girl, but he doesn't miss diaper duty. Survivor 101, everyone should instantly want to ally with Jamie. Not. Matt's strength is his affability. Franny's definitely isn't her blush control. If Carolyn's hands were any closer to Jam Jam's beard, she'd have been grooming him. <laughs> Matt's blind spot is Franny. Maybe he needs wider glasses. Ahsoka loves meditating so much. They should rename the tribe Ohm. If the Matt and Franny hug went on any longer, they'd have to get a room. Jam Jam's vote hypocrisy. Josh should forgive him, but Carolyn can't be trusted. <laughs> Franny doesn't not have a crush on Matt, and she's already planning their date. Jam Jam didn't want others to feel not pretty enough to date, so he opened a salon. Did anyone else notice Kane lip-syncing as Jeff uttered a signature phrase? He's done that multiple weeks. Yeah, he has. Carolyn was forced to listen to radio station WBRO, all bro, all the time. Who knew that the coconut tree was at the bottom of Jam Jam's alliance? Carolyn casually mentioned short-term idols. Was it a plan to disrupt the other tribes? Tika went tilt on the table maze. Is it me or is Carolyn getting a Gabler edit? Mm. Do you feel like it's a Gabler edit? I don't know. I don't think it's a Gabler edit. But it is a very, very favorable edit. His was much more under the radar. She's just kind of screaming off the charts. Josh's fake bracelet was bad. It's obvious he failed at arts and crafts in kindergarten. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> the only vehicle Jam Jam didn't throw Carolyn under was a rickshaw. Only a muscle head would tell someone they're safe because they stink at challenges. Mm. Carolyn's exaggerated signaling to Jam Jam was straight out of a sitcom. Yeah, it was a bit much. This season, unless it's mist I'm mistaken, Journey Island hasn't worked the same way twice. You are correct, sir. Carolyn's bro voice cracked me up. Josh lost his stomach. I have no stomach for his game. Jam Jam is a survivor yo-yo. He's on top, then at the bottom, then back on top. Jeff's boat visit gave Tika a reprieve. Usually the governor makes a phone call. Josh was sorry not sorry that Matthew had to drop out. Yeah, he didn't, uh, he didn't hide that very well, did he? Next, welcome to Murgatory. It's Survivor with a capital S, and Carolyn says there are too many people who will help her out by going home. Anyway, that's it for me for now. Thanks, Joanne and Stacy, for all you do. I can't wait to hear what the other Survivor fans have to say. Thanks, Josh. Good job. Next up, we got a call from Noel. Hi, everyone. It's Noelle calling from Albuquerque. I'm sorry I missed y'all last week. I was traveling, so I didn't see the episode in time to leave feedback. I really enjoyed last week's episode. I really, really enjoyed this episode. I could not turn away. It was so riveting. I can't remember the last time that I've been so wrapped up in tribe dynamics. They're doing a lot better job, I think, with the storytelling this season than they have in uh, 41, 42, 43. So maybe they're getting the hang of the... 26 days of footage as opposed to the 39 days of footage. Another thing I appreciated about this episode is that Carson and Matthew both came off more human. I thought at first that they were both like kind of showboaty and annoying, but they both had a different angle on them this week and that was nice to see. Soka, I think, is the meditation tribe. <laughs> If Danny suggested to me that we meditate, I would probably do it. But if anybody else on the tribe suggested we meditate, I think I'd be like, uh, nah, I'm good. <laughs> so not into it. Isn't it cool that the three birdcage winners all went on the journey and they didn't even know that all three of them were the birdcage winners. That was so cool. I, I was mm -hmm. so curious to see if it would come up. I'm really glad that Carolyn didn't share, at least as far as we know. Boy, Branny, Bran, not Branny. <laughs> Might as well call them Branny, <laughs> right? That's their new couple name. Brandon mm -hmm. and Danny were being real stupid, colluding in front of Carolyn like that. Wow. It was really giving any woman who's ever worked in a corporate environment. <laughs> it was so relatable. I'm having so much fun cheering for Carolyn, but I don't want to see Yam Yam go either. They're both such great TV I really appreciated Josh getting a chance to share his story. I didn't want to see him go either. I thought it was a really good testament to organ donation, which I personally used to just kind of feel superstitious about. But as soon as I had a kid, I was, oh, I'm definitely going to be an organ donor now. So I'm glad that they shared that. 
Matthew having to leave is it's so devastating to see people go out of the game that way it's so so sad I mean Joanne is completely right to be so <laughs> frustrated with him for getting himself hurt I just hope that survivors in the future will learn his lesson and not climb that stupid rock anymore <laughs> I think Cody did it last season. And finally, I think Carolyn might be making a, a mistake writing Josh off so quickly. I mean, I, I, I'm thinking like if I was her, I would try to get Josh and Jam Jam to team up with me against the Bro Alliance because I don't, I didn't get the impression that Josh was so interested in going with them, but maybe she just assumed that he would. I don't know. I, 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 I thought she was making a leap there and it was the first time all season that I have started to think she might not win because yeah, I, I think she should probably give Josh a chance, but I mean, what do I know? I, I, I've watched, what, a couple of hours of him on TV and she's lived at camp with him for days and days, so hope I'm wrong. Next episode looks like another good one. Everybody have a great weekend. Bye. Thanks, Noelle. That was really a good observation. I didn't pick up on that, that yeah. the birdcage group went. Yes. Yep. Didn't That's, even register. No, it didn't. Yeah, because when the bro down started, it just kind of dominated everything you were thinking about. Oh, yeah. How bad that their choices were at that point good job noelle next up we got a call from jade and christine hi joanna and stacy this is jade and christine from hawaii yay back together yes again. Yay. finally back together still doing a friday record friday night we yes. just watched the episode we're just recording now we haven't listened to the recap podcast or jeff's mm -hmm. podcast but we wanted to get our feedback in oh it's so fun yeah so what did you think fun. of this episode yes well first of all i have to say usb matt does not look oh. good again for him. <laughs> he even said he has a blind spot for Franny. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of a blind side. You know? yeah. <laughs> could That's be true. foreshadowing bad news for Matt. That's true. She yeah. does also have a little bit of a crush on him. So maybe she could have a little mm -hmm. bit of a blind spot for him. But it's outside of the game. She made That's it very true. clear. She outside of the game. <laughs> That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. 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 I'm worried for him. I know. Yeah. But it was so entertaining watching Jam Jam this oh time. Gosh, she was great this Had episode. Some really best moments really shown there. Uh, when he was talking about Josh having a bitch face. Yeah, <laughs> why the bitch yeah, face? Yeah, so Amazing. like <laughs> such a um, Josh is like a grudge holder. You can tell. Yeah. Yeah, and oh, the fake idol. <laughs> that was hilarious. That was so fun. It was fun because so so often these people are just like being fooled by it. I know. Right. So it was fun seeing somebody be like, "Are you kidding this me?" This is the beats from Tree Mail. Isn't this the beats from Tree Mail? <laughs> that was that was very yeah. good actually. And then he had shown the note already to Carolyn, and yeah. I guess he forgot, or maybe he just didn't realize that she would remember what it looked like. I don't. Know. I don't know. That was funny. I also <laughs> loved when Jam Jam was talking about throwing. Carolyn under the bus and the plane and the train and he's just running her over back and forth. Yes. Just, he's just funny. He's very entertaining. Yeah, he's a really good narrator. I'm glad yeah. that he didn't go home. Me too. Tonight. Me too. Even though I had him at the, my vote off point. <laughs> Me too. Oh well. But Matthew went yeah. home. So was sad. It was really sad seeing that. I'm glad yeah. he decided to take care of himself though. So. Yeah. That was definitely best for him mm. what did you think about when they went on their journey i thought it was it was kind of odd <laughs> that yeah. they yeah well, they were they were eat. eating on their knees which bothered me i know i was like talking sit about that. down sit down <laughs> yeah. it's just a small thing it's dumb <laughs> it's because you're around kids all the time that's true so you're gonna I'm like sit down something. sit down <laughs> right you can knock over the milk <laughs> sit down <laughs> yeah yeah but they were they were boys were broing out carolyn mm -hmm. was left out again yep yep she's very sensitive about that and with mm -hmm. good reason yep. i mean there she was dissed again yeah and disrespected i know people are discounting her you know i do think if she wins i i would be okay mm -hmm. with that at least what i've seen so far mm -hmm. because the editing is good with her they're showing yeah. us that people are discounting her but she is still playing a good game she is thinking mm -hmm. i appreciate that so if this is them showing us a more under the radar player, maybe a player that people are discounting winning the game. I would be fine with that. I think that's yeah. working for me. Yeah, I wouldn't mind her winning, actually. Yeah. So what do you for, think? What do you think is going to happen next oh, week? Oh, gosh. I think Jamie's in trouble. Mm -hmm. And I think she's going to be going home with <laughs> two idols in her two pocket. Idols, yeah. One fake and one real. I could definitely see that. Let's ask Dad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joanne and Stacey. Can't wait to hear what everyone yeah. has to say. Holy ho. Thanks, Jade and Christine. Great to have you both back together again. 
Next up, we got a call from Jen. Hi, everyone. This is Jen in California. Well, we have another episode where so much of the action and strategizing meant nothing because there was no tribal <laughs> council. I was really looking forward to tribal council because I wanted to see how Carol and, and Jam Jam would vote. So in the end, I was disappointed with the outcome. It was such an exciting episode, and in the end, it was all for nothing. And I feel like I'm some sort of prognosticator. A few episodes ago, I said that all of these advantages and hidden immunity idols tend to just fizzle instead of provide big payoffs. And another hidden immunity idol has exited the game unplayed. Yep. Unless we find that Matthew has given it to somebody else on his way out, that might save the day. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Oh, well, it's not the first time I've been disappointed by a nothing episode. Wah, wah. Okay, so enough of my boo-hooing. Let's get into the meat of the episode. The Carolyn and Jam Jam relationship is very interesting. Carolyn is all over the place. She likes Jam Jam a lot, but realizes that he might not be the best ally. That's interesting for me to watch. I'm finding that to be an intriguing relationship. I think that Carson is making the most of his swap. He's a very social person, and I think he's using that to his benefit. I can't believe we're getting a survivor romance here. Matt is so over the moon for Franny, and she for him too, I guess. This is That's interesting and kind of cute to watch. I'm actually really liking Jam Jam. I didn't think I would. I like his attitude toward the game. I don't like Josh's attitude. Oh, and the biggest surprise of the episode? It's only day 11. I couldn't believe that when that flashed on the screen. Decreasing the game down to 26 days has really, really accelerated things. And my final thought for the day is Danny and Brandon are horrible. They totally left Carolyn out of the conversation on the journey. And when she called them out on it, they just patronized her. I am not a fan of that. That was horrible strategy on their part. For two people who've been presented as somewhat intelligent players of the game, I don't know how they could have made such a dumb move and just completely dismissed Carolyn out of hand as a non-factor. I guess they just thought that she was going to be voted out that night. But you can't mm -hmm. just assume things like that. I mean, I get it. If they wanted to bro out, that's fine. But they could have included her, even yep. if they knew they didn't want to work with her going forward. Even if they thought she was going to be voted out. Now she's not. And she's going to be showing up there at the merge when they're all together. And she's going to blow up their game and reveal what they talked about. I mean, that's what I would do. I mean, what a mess they have gotten themselves into. I mean, speaking of fireworks, I hope she blows up their games. <laughs> I want fireworks. I want excitement. I see so much potential there for that this season. I just want to see it start. Anyway, that's it for me. Can't wait for the listener feedback show to hear what everyone else's thoughts are. Till next week. Bye. You know what's really interesting is that once we know that they're all going to one beach, and that will then cancel out the idol that the the real idol that Jamie has and the one that Carson has. Right. And then there will only be two legitimate idols left in the game. And that's Danny and Carolyn. Yeah. The others are fake. Yep. And then uh, Lauren has her extra vote. Mm -hmm. But that's all that's left in the game. Thankfully. Then that's what we need. We need some house cleaning so that it's... You, the, the mistake that I think production has been making is they're having too many things active at the same time. It's just too difficult. We've got Paul's visual roster, so we can stay on top of it. But it's just, if you're trying to watch from home and figure out what's going on, you got almost no chance the way that they, they let too much in. And then... It's like, now who had what? Suggest more with these fake idols provided by production in addition to the ones that the actual castaways create, even if they are of horrible quality like Josh's. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you think he'll try to, I guess he could, that the three of them could decide that, that uh, oh, well, we'll uh, we should use that when we go for some reason, you know his fake idol there's still something that can be done with it maybe because the other people won't know it came from unless they got the same ones on their tree mail yeah <laughs> and they may have they may put all the same beads on tree mail yeah when matthew built the one that he le left for jamie to find he used beads off their torches so maybe mm -hmm. those are a little different maybe yeah i don't know 
Do you think we'll see another advantage come back since these are going to expire? Yes. Do you, well, I mean, in this next episode on Merge Beach I, or I kinda, Murgatory Beach? I kind of think we could, yeah. Either an advantage or an idol since Matthews was taken out of the game. They're so eager, right, to, yeah. to have that. I don't know that they'll wait for Carolyn and Danny Though to do I'd something like, with theirs before I'd they like plant something them. else. I'd like for them to wait, you know, and uh, just have two active. But you got to think this would be it would be a huge temptation to want to get the inheritance advantage back in now that everybody's going to be together. That's kind of prime time where you could just sweep up a whole bunch of stuff. That would be kind of the maximum way to take advantage of it. Good deal. Thanks, Jen. Next up, we got a call from Paul. Hey, Paul, Louisiana here. And it was indeed a fun episode. Of course, it was another Carolyn packed episode. And at the risk of irking Stacy, I'm going to start right at the very end by asking if anyone else <laughs> saw Carolyn's face when Jeff said, The question is, what will now happen? She looked like she was going to blow a mental gasket or something. Now, let's rewind a bit. Yeah, fake idols are everywhere. And you know what? They discredit the real ones, which I've been saying for what feels like forever now, are also too prevalent in the game. But, you know, if the fake idols put enough doubt on the real ones, perhaps we can indirectly get back to a season where there's only a few idols being used, if only because everyone is afraid to play what they have for fear of it being fake. Did you see how convoluted this is getting? I can't help but think that after seeing how all this pans out, Jeff and company will realize that providing fake idols is not a good idea. I mean, what's next? An extra vote at Tribal to determine who the winner is? And at the start of the episode, Jam's complaining that he was left out of the loop while Carolyn kept insisting that he wouldn't listen to her. Well, is it really the best kind of argument to keep having in front of Josh, who Jam was obviously telling Carolyn to vote off? I honestly feel that Yam comes off as somewhat immature at times. Childlike, I guess. And unlike the two of you, I was pretty sure that Josh would survive this episode while we were watching those heartbreaking clips of Josh's life story. When he kept saying that he's always beaten the odds, I just felt that it would be a slap in the face and very tasteless to have him voted off after watching and listening to that. Now that said, I have to say that I now completely realize that Josh is a mess. The entire fake idol thing was so funny that I was laughing along with Jam. I loved how disgusted Josh got when he realized that his jig was up, though. And poor Carolyn. Yeah, she got completely discounted yet again. Her new targets are most definitely Brandon, Danny, and Josh. But let me make a bold statement here. I've also gotten the distinct impression that women in general specifically intelligent and or desirable ones, shall we say, intimidate Carolyn, and she doesn't want them around either. It's going to be very interesting to see how this merge, or whatever we're calling it, will affect her. She's already mostly unhinged, but I think she's about to experience a bit too much stimulation for her own good. Still, if she can manage to lay low, she can probably get very far. But Matt, wow, that poor, poor boy is just a hopeless case. Franny is going to break his heart and then gut him so badly. And speaking of Matt, I'll miss the other one, Matthew. But yeah, who did he give his idol to? I'm sure he gave it to someone. And to be perfectly honest, if he gave it to Carson, then I'll have to believe there was a lot less to Matthew's game than I thought there'd be. I'm really hoping that he didn't buy into Carson's whole we're best buddies spiel. I think he saw through that, though. And that he gave Brandon his idol. Because, again, I do think he gave it to someone. So what's next to happen? Well, I think when a tribe gets down in numbers as low as Tika is, that they become assets or extra votes when the teams merge. I'm thinking that Josh will be saved again, and that Franny or Matt will become bigger problems since they're a power duo. Of course, there's always the chance that Jamie will tell everyone that she never saw any hint of the two of them being a couple. Now, I hate to think that Matt goes next, but that's currently where my head is. Unless, of course, the monkey wrench knows Carolyn goes after someone else, like Danny or Brandon. I'm just not sure which one upset her most. Maybe Brandon, because he pretty much told her she's no threat, right? Mm -hmm. I'm really going to need to see how she handles the whole group dynamic thing. But for now, I'm going to play my shot in the dark, and I'm going to say that Matt's leaving. And I guess that's it for me. Take care, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Paul. That could entirely come to fruition. (laughs) Although, I don't know. What are you accomplishing by getting Matt out when you got these other bigger targets? Yeah, he's not... I. Though they do see power couples as a big threat, but... But does anybody really perceive Matt and, and Franny as a power couple? 
<laughs> that's uh, part of their charm. Some is they, they're, they're not. They're not. They're, they're not, a together vote. That's There's, dangerous in any game you that's, play. That's true. That's true. But power and Matt and Franny don't seem to go together. Yeah. <laughs> I can't reconcile those. I think Paul may be right. Even in his exit interviews, again, Matthew said that he did not give the idol to anyone. Had he given it to someone and he could, it would have been first to Cain. So those dynamics are, are way different like we were talking about before. But we have had someone say things in their exit interview about where their advantage or idol went and that turned out not to be true that we get in a later surprise flashback so not not sure i'm not 100 percent. i'm sure i believe matthew's story that he didn't give it to anyone i will not be surprised to see it in a flashback hmm, okay i guess it's a possibility yes Okay, I think we got some unfinished business from we Wednesday do, night. We do, we do. The <clears throat> JSFL stats. All right, we still have two people who are tied for first place with 24 points. 18 people lost their USB with Matthew. 39 people lost a safe point. No one earned a vote-off point this week so that, because there was no vote-off. So yeah. you, there, what did you think of Prope saying that he didn't quit? That Matthew didn't quit? Yeah, he doesn't consider it a quit. I don't consider it a quit. Well, he quit. <laughs> <laughs> For medical reasons, he quit, but he it's, quit. Yeah, that's a different kind of quit. He didn't quit? In my opinion. On day 10, 9, He eight, should have seven. left a lot sooner. Right. Because he probably did more damage. That's why there was as much damage, is that he was lifting and rolling heavy boxes through the water and digging through the lifting sand, lifting them up, digging through the. Really and we were in. correct. He yeah. said that he did dislocate it a second time. Yes. Uh, when he was digging through the sand, and that he was able to pop it back in, and then go underneath that log. And then he helped to lift up high all those boxes. Now, to me, somebody else should have been lifting the boxes. Anybody else than him right after you popped it. That was insane. Yeah, probably but, could have been doing extra damage during that oh, process. Oh, I'm pretty sure he did do a lot of extra damage by trying to do all that physical stuff. And uh, But... That's, I don't hold it against him like I do the others that quit because they're uncomfortable or they're tired right, or they're right, hungry right. or they just don't want to, things aren't going their way and they don't want to be there anymore. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't call it a quit. You agree with probes. I okay, agree back with to the probes. GSFL Not update. A quit. No one got a vote off point because there was no vote. Okay, yes. So this week it was either if you had Matthew safe, you got three points. If you didn't have him safe, you got four. Yes. That was the, the bottom line. Okay. Okay, for the side challengers, with 22 points tied for first, Jeremiah and Rebecca. 21 points, Chris, Justin, and Randy. 20 points, Cold Mike, Drew, and Parker. With 19, Robert and Stacy, And with 18, Lisa Ray. Thanks, Lisa. So nobody had Matthew safe in this group. So. Yeah. It was... Status quo. Yeah, status quo. Good deal. All right, thanks. Next, I want to say thanks to everybody who took the time to share your thoughts and predictions with us. We enjoyed it, and we appreciate hearing from everyone. We also want to give a big thank you to Sandy, Scott, Christy, Erica, and Hazel for your donations. We greatly appreciate your support. We also want to thank Jeremiah for updating the banner on the SFP fans page on Facebook. If you play in JSFL, don't forget to make your week six picks for one person voted off and four people who will still be safe at the end of the episode. And if you want to join us in these listener feedback shows, you can call and leave a voicemail at 206-350-1547, toll free 844-643-8737. You can record your own audio and attach it to an email or send a text email to us at Joanne and Stacy Show at gmail.com and we'll read it into the show on your behalf. Feedback's due noon Pacific time. Everybody did great getting their feedback in this week. Thank you for that. And we ask that you keep it in that three minute range so we can get everybody in. 
Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to next week. Excited to see how the dynamics change when they come together. Murgatory can be an odd part of the game. It's not settled. There's just this continued unsettling Murgatory. feeling. Murgatory. Huh? Yeah, that, that, that happens before the merge becomes official. And I can't tell from the preview stuff that's out there if we're going to end with a merge or not. It could actually drag on. From a timing perspective, they kind of need to do another vote out to get to that first person on the jury were merged kind of scenario. But we'll see. Well, uh, the, the first person voted off after the merge isn't always the first one on the jury. Yes, I know. Oh, okay. Yep. All right. Well, we'll be back on Wednesday with our recap of the next episode. Have a good one.